So this is 1.7 inverse string functions. We'll start off with an example. Okay, so we want to find the domain and range of the trig function y equals sine inverse of 2x. There's a couple ways to do this, but this is how we're going to do it. So let's start off with a little bit of review. So this quick sketch of that. So just a review of how to find the inverse. Remember, it has to be one-to-one. -one. We can't have repeating y values where we need to restrict this Let's to the top of this and bottom. This is pi over 2. So the restricted domain, so that it's one-to-one. -one. So our restricted domain, so that it remains one-to-one, -one. so that the y values don't re repeat. It's minus pi over 2 pi over 2, and our range is the same. For inverse, the domain and the range flop. Okay, so that's not quite the function we have for y equals sine inverse of 2x. What's different is that x gets replaced with 2x. So the thing that it's going to affect is the domain. We have x between minus 1 and 1, but x gets replaced with 2x. So isolate the x. So our domain is from minus 1 half to 1 half, and the range is still the same. Let's do some examples. So this one's just asking for the angle. The inverse is an angle. And again, here we've got our ang the answer needs to be between, between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Remember, this is where the sine is positive in quadrant 1 and negative in quadrant 4, down to quadrant 4. And so... We're here in quadrant four, which is negative. Do we mean between these two angles? Pi over six is our answer, i.e. sine of minus pi over six is equal to negative one half. Another one. Again, tangent is between the same two, but not including minus pi over two to pi over I mean, sorry, pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. That's where the answer, basically, the range has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the answer, we're definitely, since it's positive in quadrant 1, it's either 30 degrees or 60 degrees, if we remember correctly. And it's the tangent of theta squared with what theta, what angle is square root of 3 over 1? I do remember. So it's going to be 60 degrees or pi over 3 is our answer. Let's do another one. So the range of the cosine inverse, when we had to restrict it, again, cosine's positive here and negative here. And so, and it's positive here, so we definitely want one that has positive and negative, so it is between 0 and pi. So we're definitely in quadrant 2, pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4 is our answer. Okay, one last one, which is actually super important. I actually suggest you find other similar ones and practice them. We'll need this in Chapter 3 when we find the derivative of inverse trig functions. We need to do the composition of sine of the cosine of just a random x. So the composition, we should do the inside first. And the inside first, we do know we're looking for an angle, right? Inverses are the angles such that this is the ratio. So if that's an angle, we'll call that theta. So basically, we want the sine of theta, where theta is equal to the cosine inverse of x. 
we want to rewrite this, it might be helpful. Take the cosine of both sides. The cosine of theta equals x. Remember, the cosine of theta is a ratio, so we'll call that rate x over 1. It's helpful to draw it. And cosine inverse, remember, we're looking at this one, is either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. I'm going to draw in both, but you'll see we probably could just draw it in quadrant 1 and be okay. Cosine of at theta, we'll call that theta. It's x over 1, and remember x can be negative, that's why it can go into quadrant 2. Still x over 1, so it's the same picture in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. And we need to find this. We'll call that b, solve for b, quadratic formula, since that's a right triangle. But we can see in our picture it is just positive, so it's going up. So it's the same picture, so we can pretty much ignore this quadrant. So we want the sine of that theta. That theta, the sine of that theta, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that is the, the composition. The sine of that theta was cosine inverse of x is just this. And that's our answer. Thanks for watching.